Hello, welcome to the Lone Show. I'm your host, John May Lone, and this episode don't have any regulars because reasons, I guess. That's for our guest. He's from Exeter in the United Kingdom. He is a writer, artist, and also editor. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Sean B. W. Parker. Uh, hello, thanks very much. Nice to be here. Anytime. So, how's life? Uh, life's fine. Uh, it's in the middle of a heat wave here in uh, on the Sussex coast in England, so uh, we're burning up, but um, getting on with work, you know. Oh yeah, same here. <laughs> so, have you been up too much recently? Well, um, I'm constantly editing and writing. It's uh, what I do, and some painting as well. So, uh, at the times that we're not absolutely melting here, um, I was at the falsely accused day yesterday up in London, uh, supporting other colleagues. Um, there outside New Scotland Yard, so that was exciting. Ah, okay, that's pretty cool. Mm. So, as a writer, artist, and or editor, how long have you you've been going on for? Um, well, I started to write at the age of uh, 14, so back in 1989, and um, had my first uh, poem uh, published in 1995 in the local paper, and uh, for the last t- t- uh, 10 years, since 2014, I've published uh, eight eight books and contributed to four more. So, um, I mean, I've been doing it for 30 years, but uh, as a professional, in inverted commas, for about 10. Hmm. Nice. <laughs> what, in- what inspired you to become a writer? Um, probably... Mr. Robert Smith of The Cure, I think, in the first instance uh, back back then in the 80s, uh, understanding the worlds that uh, these artists can take you to. And then um, discovering Mr. Dolin, Mr. D- uh, Mr. D-Y-L-A-N Thomas, Mr. Dylan Thomas, the poet from South Wales, uh, was revelatory in my 20s. Um, so putting those together with uh, various... The fact that when you enter into a world of verse or poem can kind of take you to another place is uh, very beautiful. And um, I'm an enthusiast of the English language. And uh, so, yeah, it, it just all comes from some kind of inside source that you can't really uh, locate. <laughs> ah, fabulous. Hmm. And what about artists and editor? How, at what point did those, was that, those inspirations came along? I've always been interested in art itself um i got uh, got got my degree from the university for the creative arts in surrey uh around the millennium and um got a master's there as well and especially my speciality was in abstract painting uh and uh, the, the video art um i've continued to abs- to paint given a chance um and so that's always been an undercurrent i've never really been out there kind of uh, for marketing myself in the art world for for unknown reasons, but for the fact that I'm much more confident in writing and um, it's more flexible in a, and there are more opportunities. So, um, but they do go hand in hand completely for me. So, um, I, yeah, I don't know if I answered. But, um... Yeah, that, that, that was a pretty good response. Hmm. So where would you see yourself 20 years from now? 20 years from now. Well, I um, I am very much a live in the moment kind of person and I don't go much before next next week, uh, beyond next week. But um, 20 years from now, it would, of course, all, almost all artists I know would like to increase their reach at any stage. And that's part of what the podcast revolution is all about. And the independent way we can do that these days is fabulous. So you kind of connect up all these things. Um, the albums on Spotify, the books on Amazon, uh, the sort of news on X and you kind of tie all those things in together with brilliant kind of podcasts like this who are able to tell the world about it and there's this kind of subculture of um, kind of connected streams which is really interesting and we'll see what that leads to in 20 years time if that is the established norm which I'm sure it kind of will be nice nice hmm. have you ever thought about living in a world that is literally nothing but gardens i have never thought about that uh but that sounds like a very nice idea and somewhat heavenly but also possibly without the additions of the modern world which i also like like concrete and nightclubs and things (laughs) 
<laughs> ah, yes, of course. Interesting question, though. <laughs> yes, indeed. What was the longest trip you've ever been on? Um, well, I lived in Istanbul for 10 years, but I don't suppose you'd call that a trip so much as a, as a home. <laughs> so uh, there was that, uh, but it, it was very much like a trip. Uh, but apart from that, I went to, to Louisiana for th three weeks when I was 15. And uh, that was a wonderful sort of three weeks when I got to see what America is, how it works and the, the size of it. And um, yeah, that was incredibly powerful for the emancipating mind of a young boy, you know. Mm -hmm. It sure was. Mm -hmm. What is something they sh they don't teach at school, but they should? Hmm. It's a bit more like the things that they are teaching that they shouldn't at the moment. But um, fair question. Uh... Wow, I hadn't, hadn't, hadn't really pre prepared for that one, really. And uh, I'm not entirely sure, but it's about more how they teach rather than what they teach. And everything that a student does should be encouraged, I think. And... In, in the world that I'm from, outside of the hard sciences, there aren't any wrong answers. So that kind of thing should always be encouraged too in the arts and, 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 and the music and things. So if you're going to teach music, don't just have the sheet music and get them to do, do the violin perfectly. Just do any kind of creative expression in that music studio and you will engage the students without a doubt. That's a great idea. Because <laughs> especially at this time and age, this day and age, the way that the, the current education system is, it has not evolved since its creation in the 1900s. So uh, it, it's a good idea to revolutionize how we teach rather than what we teach. Hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. If you could get an exotic pet, what kind of companion would you like to have? <laughs> These are the weirdest questions. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, possibly an iguana because they're enormous and they just sit still for like three hours looking amazing. So I think that kind of a, that kind of a pet would be quite interesting, but uh, yeah. I don't like having too many external responsibilities in my life. So um, yeah. Or a dog. Yeah. I love dogs. It's just, I'm like, you know, too busy for one. Fair enough. <laughs> if you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be? Ah, aspiration question. I, uh, I'm absolutely happy here on the Sus Sussex coast, having lived abroad before, and that, that definitely helps. But that's a bit of a self-satisfied answer. So to answer yours better, I would say maybe Scandinavia, uh, kind of uh, sort of Iceland in specific, because that looks like a fascinatingly interesting country of sort of, tr uh, sort of tr uh, true sophistication, but with a real kind of rootsy sense of folk. And uh, I like that very much. So, yeah, possibly Iceland. But um, I don't know how much they're into English people. Well, <laughs> and, and I haven't applied for the visa, so we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, I do like Scandinavia, especially mm -hmm. Norway, because uh, the fjords. I, I would love to live in the mountains someday. But uh, event, uh, however, there is like a fun to build a house and how to build a house with the, the landscape, of course. But yeah, that'd be pretty cool for me to just live in the mountains. There you go. Scandinavia it is. Indeed. <laughs> what food? What food is underrated or underappreciated? Um, food is underrated. I think that um, uh, breakfast cereals get a bit of a bad rap because people just think that it's um like for kids or something. But uh, but they're very new breakfast cereals. They've only been around about eighty or hundred years, and they're um. They're delicious, and they keep you going. All, they keep me going all day long, almost. So uh, I think they're rather under underappreciated, and they're, they're very good for the system. So yeah, I'll go for breakfast cereals with that one, specifically Shreddies. The shout out for Shreddies. Oh yes, Shreddies. They're a classic. <laughs> I'm really enjoy, enjoying the madness of these questions. It's brilliant. Yeah, I love it. It's a, it's a vibe. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. I'm getting it now. Yeah. How did you spend your last birthday? Oh, right. When was my last birthday? Uh, a few months ago. And um, you know what? After 45, I don't think I really um, paid much attention. I probably spent it at home on Twitter and possibly listening to David Bowie. And if that's not the case, that'll 
that'll do because that's very regular for me. <laughs> yeah, same. Not much. I like chilling as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I can keep kind of keep the brain engaged as you chill because I can't tell what chilling really is these days. You know, it's all so mixed up because because the work that I do is my chill time, etc. So, yeah, if I want to relax, I go out for a walk. Yeah, of course. <laughs> What kind of music do you listen to? Uh, I have a massively eclectic taste, as many people do these days. I um, very much like kind of classical as I get older. Um, or I have an in-depth understanding of kind of indie for like 30, 40 years, uh, kind of indie rock in general. I'm, I can kind of quote various things. And also old school hip hop. I'm a big, big fan of uh, kind of... Uh, the Public Enemy and Wu Tang Clan, things like that. Um, but uh, not so much a uh, aficionado. I just really enjoy it and find it extremely funky. So, um, but I, I uh, uh, as the evening comes, as sort of six o'clock comes, I get on the Spotify or the YouTube, but Spotify is very useful and um, kind of go to one of those generally or a playlist in with one of those uh, genres on it. Mm, of course. <laughs> what was the last book you've read? Uh, the last book I read was uh, completed. I'm halfway through a book now by Mr. Jonathan King, who's an English record producer, which is very interesting. But um, the last one I finished was uh, called uh, Redemption by Stanley Tookie Williams, who was uh, the last, who, who was a prisoner uh, of maintaining innocence in the US until he was executed in 2005. Um, he was the founder of the LA Crips and um, was accused of killing two guys sort of in his 20s. And he insists that he didn't do this. And I have an interest in wrongful conviction. So I was kind of reading it for a review, but it's a brilliantly written book. And he won some sort of a prize for it. I think it was it was kind of nominated for, for a big, big prize at the time. And it was a bestseller. Uh, Redemption by Stanley Dickey Williams. Very good indeed. Mm, fabulous. What's a common misconception people have about you? Oh, uh, well, I to try not not not, not to, to to kind of mind read too much. But um, if anybody thinks out there in online world that I'm a men's rights activist, uh, I'm not. <laughs> but I am very very interested in justice and um, trying to establish that in the age of sexual politics can um, give that impression sometimes. But I'm an equal rights writer not an MRA, though I've got complete support for those people too. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can see that. Hmm. What happens in real life, but rarely gets portrayed in movies? Hmm. Um, wow, that is such a good question. I'm trying my best to, um, to, to vocalise a <laughs> response to it. I think the fact of things being in sort of 2D in front of you means that the screen can never interact properly with human soul so the screen can never really interpret what an epiphany of something is like when you meet the person that you love um that feeling or you hear an incredible piece of music for the first time that feeling or if perhaps you pray and you have those feelings it can never actually feed that back but would you want it to so <laughs> I, I don't have an answer to your question but that's that's my thinkings on it <laughs> Oh, okay. That's uh, that's good enough, anyway. <laughs> Would you ever try space tourism? Hmm. Um, the Musk option. Uh, you know, I might if it became a norm, because I'm not much of a pioneer when it comes to tech stuff. I, I'm not the kind of one who must do things first. So, um, I'd see how it's going, and uh, obviously, I'm as curious as anybody else. But um, yeah, I'd give it a go if someone else paid for sure. Oh yes, you never know these days when things goes. Ah! Yeah, you know? just, just out of nowhere. Absolutely. What was the scariest movie you've seen? Scariest movie. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm. I, I suppose when it comes to being actually scary, The Exorcist is brilliantly scary with the ages. So it's still damn spooky and very very powerfully done. Um, an American Werewolf in London is not considered scary, it's considered sort of more kitsch, 
but it's an extremely frightening film as well and just so well made. So I'll go for two there. Exorcist and American Werewolf are both um, brilliantly made and very scary at the same time. And I require both of those for it to work, you know? <laughs> ah, yes, of course. What is the one thing you can't live without? Mm. Um, well, the sad, honest answer to that question at the moment is nicotine vapes, because uh, I've been a addicted to nicotine since I was 17. Uh, but at least it's not cigarettes anymore. So um, it would, in honesty, be vaping. <laughs> but also, uh, I'm very attached to my laptop, as people are attached to their tech these days. And um, I've got a diary in which I write everything down when I'm out doing my walks and getting my thoughts. And um, it's the couple of times I've uh, lost that in my adult life have been heartbreaking. So it would be awful to, to lose my diary for sure. Okay. <laughs> what app can you not believe someone hasn't made yet? Mm, uh, the Everything app. By, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not good enough on tech to know or to be even on the forefront of it. So um, they haven't got a love app and they don't have a friendship app. These, you know, these things don't actually work <laughs> online. And I don't think they're ever going to work in, in, in the 3D in the way that they want either. Thank goodness, because... That's not what I use tech for. So um, I don't know the answer to that one. <laughs> it's all right. I mean, the other thing app would be great. The thing is uh, too reliance. Too That's much right. of reliance is the issue, yeah. That's right. I don't want kind of a, a company having everything. It's, I don't need that. No. Yeah, it's like one company having a monopoly in every sector. And you, you uh, yeah, it's a big money factor or something. Well, all sorts power money and if if something goes wrong if if, you, if it's all in the one place you're screwed so yeah no don't fancy that oh yes what is your favorite thing to eat and or drink uh well let's continue the the promotion of shreddies because i you might have guessed earlier i love my shreddies of um, course you do <laughs> and uh i do like a cadbury's cream egg and I, i'm disappointingly english in the answers to this to Give some credit to my sort of Turkish past. I love um, baklava, which is a dessert from Turkey. That's delicious. And um, oh. Oh, yeah, with drink, I, I'm a coffee guy. Coffee in front of me now. <laughs> I'm so unexotic. Um, and these days I've discovered 0% alcohol Guinness, which is an absolute treat. It's gorgeous and there's no hangover. So uh, I'm a big enthusiast of that. A bit like an advert, this, but um, it's fair enough because I do enjoy those products. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, who knows? Maybe someday you might get paid for even mentioning them in an episode <laughs> of a podcast or show. You never know if they listen to this. Yep. <laughs> oh, yes. What was the hardest thing you've ever done? The hardest thing I've ever done? Uh, wow. Well, that's, that's uh, such a question. There are very controversial answers to that one but i'm also going to go for a more uh informative one where i was asked to give a ted talk in 2013 and being a stammerer it's a, a bit of a challenge but also something i knew i should do and i did it and there were some stamp some stammering but i did it pulled it off and it became one of the most watched ted talks on stammering online at the time and still is and so um yeah that was hard and it was worth it and it was great it sure was <laughs> you never know unless you try absolutely yeah if you could create your own job title what would it be oh i did um well um what i do is i'm a i'm a writer artist musician and academic <laughs> and uh you know, that's the four things that I do. So that's my job title. <laughs> Sweet. Mm. Would you rather speak all languages or talk to animals? <laughs> um, speak all languages, I think. Yes. What an amazing gift that would be. And slightly insane. Yes. It'd be quite a flex. <laughs> that's the one. Yeah. yeah. Would you rather... Be able to breathe underwater or have the agility of a cat? Ooh. Ooh. Agility of a cat, please. Yes. Wow. All right, That's then. What you can get into. 
sweet. If you could give a 40 minute presentation on anything, what would it be? Hmm. Well, um, this is a part of what I do. Um, and what it would be would be um, an analysis of the criminal justice system post uh, for me too in the US and the UK, <laughs> which is the sort of thing I'll be giving in the next academic year. Oh, okay. Hmm. Ah, academic year. So uh, you are going to do some speaking at some university of some sort? Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's, it's a part of uh, what I do as an academic is um, to give talks on this kind of subject sometimes. So, uh, yeah, I'll be giving that at a couple of unis. Oh, that's pretty cool. Hmm. If you could slow down time, what would you do with that power? Ooh, slow down time. Um... Wow, that's you're talking in a spatial dimension that I'm not very good at visualizing. But you know, I'd probably try now and again to extend the weekend uh, mornings a little bit to have a bit of a lie in, which is an incredibly boring answer to your brilliant question. <laughs> I can't think of anything at the moment. It's all right, it's good enough anyway. Hmm. What's your quote usual from your favorite fast food place? Oh, um. Yeah, despise all fast food, but um, and you know don't do it. But I, when I'm pushed and I'm out, I get a sort of a ham salad sandwich from um from from a news agent, which is not incredibly perfect food. So it's I guess it's fast. So a sandwich, yes. Okay, food that is delivered fast. That's very true. Very true. Yes. How much time do you spend on the internet? Uh, much more than I thought I ever would because um, it's deeply integrated to my job now. So um, I have my articles open that I edit and in the other window, you've got your social media open as well to, to make sure you haven't missed anything and then the email's somewhere else. So um, yeah, it's hard to tell when you're online and when you're off, isn't it? I think there'll be a lot of people who recognize that these days, um, for better or worse. But at the moment, that's where my work life is so yeah uh, i spend a lot of time on online and if i'm out of the house though i don't have it on my phone and that's how i stay sane so if i go out for, you know for a trip or those walks i'm not actually online so that, that's a good way to keep it more sane ah sweet hmm. which recent news story have you found most interesting well i, I uh Report on these things all the time for uh, on on X for, for for my false allegations watch site, and um, just uh, uh, um, I I heard yesterday that the that the writer Zadie Smith uh, Z A D I E um, has come out to say that, and sh she's a writer of color here in the UK. Uh, she's come out to say that we shouldn't be obsessed with trying to alter history according to um, how we act today, as in doing the revision of the past that they've been doing with books and films. She's come out to be against that, which is very unusual for a person in the arts of colour at her level. So um, that was an interesting news. It's a bit obscure, but it's um, a thing that I read yesterday that I was quite impressed with. Mm, sweet. Mm. What's your favourite ice cream topping? <laughs> uh, chocolate I'm going for chocolate for that one mm. love chocolate All right, then. nice mm. what takes a lot of time to master but is definitely worth it ah oh, any musical instrument particularly the classic lot like guitar, piano violin, trumpet you know brass if if a kid, or no, if anybody can put the effort in to get to a level of comfort playing, it's incredibly satisfying and it's it's well worth doing. And it doesn't come naturally for almost anybody. So it's just a thing you've got to plug at. And it's just so incredibly rewarding once you've got it. So, yeah, that important to learn an instrument, definitely. Yes. Couldn't agree more. Hmm. Do you like spicy food? I do. I do. Um, I don't eat very much of it these days because I'm a bit of a 
convenience eater this, despite my comments on fast food i'm a bit convenience based um but given a chance and given the company that likes spicy food i will yeah definitely go for a hot curry all right then very good mm -hmm. very good if someone wrote a book about you what do you think its title would be <laughs> uh oh dear um I cannot conceptualize myself in, well, I, I suppose I could, <laughs> but it's, it's an incredibly vain thing. To do. I mean, because I'm an artist, I do my art. And uh, if a person called it a man in the arts or something, it wouldn't be an incorrect title, but it does sound incredibly pompous. So let's see what they come up with. But something like a man in the arts would uh, be very, very flattering. <laughs> uh, cool, 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 cool. If your mind was an island, what would it look like? Ah, uh, probably like um, the map of the world just off the coast of Dubai, which they've built, because um, it's just like a construct there sitting <laughs> outside this bizarre invented city. So that's that would be quite fun. But um, yeah, or possibly like, like the Rock of Gibraltar, just this bizarre thing on the gap between the Mediterranean and the Atlantic. That's quite a nice metaphor for an unbelievably difficult to answer question. <laughs> Mm, yes, of course. Would you rather be really hot or really cold? <laughs> right, it was. It's boiling here at the moment in Britain, and so. Uh, but that's a bit more enjoyable. So let's go for really hot. Not that I'm looking for hell, but uh, yes, really hot is better than really cold. I would say. Yeah, I agree. I don't mm. mind the cold, but uh, I think hot weather is uh, much more top tier than you know what. If you're going to have to endure anything, I suppose. Yep. Anything is better than nothing. Quite. Would you rather be transported 500 years into the future or 500 years into the past? Hmm. Um, 500 into the future, I think, just for curiosity's sake. Because um, in the past, even though we fantasize about it and we make the dramas, we do have the pictures, so there's not as much curiosity. And if we did step back then, probably be instantly executed for whatever reasons so it'd be interesting to see if you'd be instantly executed 500 years in the future um or not let's hope not but you know if that happens come back alive with a bit of luck <laughs> mm, fabulous what was the last lie you were ever being told the last lie you have ever been told uh <laughs> I have the kind of memory that doesn't hold on to negative things very well, which is quite happily for me. Um, um, but <laughs> as a kid, kind of, my uh, dad did say to me, if there's one thing in life you should remember is to not let your left hand know what your right hand's doing. That was his advice to me as a boy, um, which on reflection was just terrible advice because it just means be dishonest if you can get your own way. So I never took it, <laughs> um, but he gave me that sort of advice to lie on. And basically, I'm not very good at lying because I don't see the point. I don't have the necessity. I can't remember them when they're done to me, and I don't sort of try to hunt them out. So um, difficult question. Not very, not very well answered, but I gave you an anecdote anyway. <laughs> yep. And I can actually understand how that makes no sense. Because, uh, yeah, well, what, what's, what's the point? What's the use of being dishonest? That's right. That's right. Especially these days when everything, everybody's honest about everything anyway and just get on with the consequences. Yep, indeed. And that is all we have for this episode. It was great having you on, Sean, talking about your works as a writer, an artist, editor, and also a speaker as well, apparently. It's been great. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's the most interesting half an hour I can remember. Brilliant. You're welcome. Right. And until next time, stay tuned for more.